Hey, what's up y'all? This is Josh back again with another video from Keep It Techie, where I show you guys how to use Linux and get into tech the smart way. Now, if you've been in the enterprise Linux space for a while, especially since the CentOS shakeup a few years ago, you already know why Rocky Linux matters. And today we're diving into something big, and that's Rocky Linux 10.0 which has officially released. Now this is a major milestone, which is tracking upstream rail 10.0. And it's built with long-term stability in mind. So in this video, I'm going to break down what's new in Rocky 10, why it matters, and how it fits into the future of enterprise Linux. I'll also share some of my own thoughts on where I think this distro is headed, especially since I'm actually building my own custom XFCE based distro Kit Pro OS using Rocky Linux 9 and 10 as the base. So trust me, I've been deep in this ecosystem lately. So whether you're a system admin, a home labber, or just someone looking for a rock solid OS that you can count on for years, this video is for you. And hey, if you appreciate content like this, breaking down enterprise Linux in plain English, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps more folks in the tech space find this info and support the channel. So let's get into it. All right, let's start with what Rocky Linux 10 is bringing to the table. So what is Rocky Linux? For those who might be new, Rocky Linux is a community driven rebuild of Red Hat Enterprise Linux launched by Gregory Cursor, the original CentOS founder, after Red Hat moved CentOS to a rolling release model. And so Rocky is all about staying one-to-one -one binary compatible with upstream rail. So if you're deploying rail in production, but want to avoid licensing fees, Rocky is your go-to. Now Rocky Linux 10 is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10 which means it comes with massive updates to the kernel, modernized system libraries, and tooling changes aimed at long-term support. What's up, y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS, and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Keep it techie. Peace. I mean, this release focuses on three key goals, and that's modernization for cloud and container environments, consistency across hybrid and edge deployments, stability and lifecycle support for the next decade. And Rocky delivers on all three without the licensing lock-in. Now let's go over to some of the major new features. For one, Rocky 10 is now running a newer kernel version in line with upstream rail 10 bringing performance gains, hardware compatibility improvements, and support for newer chipsets. Now check this out. There are a couple tool chain upgrades. So GCC 13 is now the default compiler. There's also updated glibc, bin utils, and core build tools. And you'll also see some modern versions of Python, Go, Rust, Ruby, and Node.js. They are all included in this latest version of Rocky Linux. Now, if you're deploying to Kubernetes, Docker, or Podman environments, Rocky 10 is container ready out of the gate. And SE Linux policy updates, namespace improvements, and OCI runtime compatibility are all here. Now, we all know and love Cockpit, but it now has better performance and more modules which are preloaded. So you can manage storage, networking, users, and even terminal access all through a sleek web UI. And that's great for headless servers or teams who want GUI tools without installing X. Now there are a lot of security improvements in this latest release. Rocky 10 includes updated crypto libraries. So open SSL three and above, you also have support for FIPS mode out of the box. You got systemd, OOMD for smarter resource control, 
and SE Linux updates to improve policy enforcement. So yeah, is Lockdown modernized and ready for enterprise workloads? Now you guys know one of the things I like to do is show you guys a quick install. So let's run through that right fast. As you can see, I'm booted up into the Grub menu. There is the test media and install Rocky Linux 10. And this is our boot ISO. You can download either one. There's the DVD, there's the boot ISO, and then there's that net boot ISO as well, or the net installer. You can download either one, but you can test your media. That's one of the things I recommend you do. But let's say you need to rescue a system. You guys probably know this, but you can go into troubleshooting. You can rescue Rocky Linux, you know, boot from the first drive. You can boot from the second drive, you know, all that good stuff. And you can press escape to go back to the previous menu. We're gonna test it right fast, or actually I've already tested this ISO. We're just gonna hit the install Rocky Linux line, get you to the menu, and we can go through the full install right fast. All right, so we are at Anaconda. And the code name for this release of Rocky is Red Quartz. So that's why you see the background has changed. It has that nice red background. You see Rocky Linux up here. You'll see Rocky Linux 10 installation. And you can go through, select your language and begin the install process. Super simple, closest mirrors to you, which is fine. You can set up your drives. You can go in and customize them however you want to. I'm gonna just leave them standard they'll it'll automatically set it up for you that's fine it's best to go in and customize them i recommend you do that and let me show you guys what it'll do like if you have let's say you got a 100 gigabyte drive or if you're setting this thing up production and you got a 100 gigabyte drive or something for your i don't know for your total operating system what it'll do it, it won't use all the free space so if you go into customization this will actually allow you to use all the space. With LVM setup, it'll just use what it needs or what it thinks it needs. And you can specify how you want the drive set up yourself. I recommend you do it that way, especially if you know you want to set up the drive. So let me see Discord all changes. Let's see reset selection, preserve current selection. Uh let me go back. Actually, let's go LVM. Click here to create them automatically and let's hit nine. That's fine. Set changes. Boom, we're good. So custom partitioning selected. And actually, let's go back to automatic just so you guys, because most people will select automatic, that's fine. Select your time zone, K-Dump if you need it, software selection. It all depends on what you want to set up. So if you want a server with a GUI, which I'll set up that for today, or you can set up a server with no GUI, you can set up the minimal install, which is super cool. So it doesn't have all those extra packages on there and you can install everything you want on there from scratch. You can install a desktop environment, whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Workstation, if you want like a friendly desktop environment just for a workstation or a system that you're just gonna be working on, you can select all the additional packages if you want, you know, something on there like a, for development, workstation, a graphical administration tool, uh, if you need it. You know, it's, it's, it's all depending on what you need it for, like scientific support. You can install all those tools, security tools. It all depends on what you're working or using this system for. You can select these different groups and like I said, I'm gonna just use the server GUI, which is fine. It'll just create a system with base tools that you would probably use for a server. And you can select what you want from there, but I'm not gonna select anything because it will slow down the install. Then you wanna create your accounts. So I'm gonna just create a user account, which is fine. I'm gonna add that user to the will group. And that's one cool thing right there. It automatically, that's one change that I see. It automatically adds this user to the administrative group and it gives it administrative privileges. So it puts it in that will group. And I'm not sure, maybe it, it did that before. If you don't select the root accounts or set a password on a root account, I'm not sure. I think it still doesn't select that. You have to go in and select that. You still have to do that. But anyway, let's go on and set a password for this accounts. Require a password for login, that's fine. But you can leave the root account disabled. I recommend you do that for security purposes. It's a good thing. Or you can set it if you want to. Or some people just use the root account. If they're running a server, they can just use the root account and you don't and you don't have to create a user at all. And they don't use sudo. They just log in and run everything as roots, which I don't recommend because you can really mess up the system if you don't know what you're doing. But if you know what you're doing, just run the system as root just as long as you know what you're doing. And then that's pretty much it. It'll start the install. It'll set up your hard drive first and then copy over all the software or download all the packages and then start installing everything 
for the operating system. It'll install, install the kernel, install all the packages, you know, set everything up for you. And then when you reboot, it will bring up your desktop environment. So that's pretty much it, straightforward. Now, let me give you guys my honest take on Rocket Linux 10, especially from the perspective of someone building their own distro on top of it. First off, I've been working on a project called Kit Pro OS. It's my own customized version of Rocky tailored for a secure workstation or a server setup with a XFCE desktop. I chose Rocky 9 as the foundation originally, but with Rocky 10 now available, I've already started testing it as the next base. And here's the thing, Rocky 10 feels like what CentOS used to be, but with a renewed focus. It's not flashy, it's not bloated, and it doesn't try to be a desktop first distro. It's lean, predictable, and production ready. For system admins out there, if you're running rail in production, but you want to build testing or dev environments without chewing through subscriptions, then rail 10, I mean, that's pretty much a no brainer. It'll behave exactly like your rail boxes. And of course, for us devs and home labbers, this gives you a modern platform without surprises. No version drift, no experimental packages, just clean, stable Linux. Now, the only downside, depending on your hardware, the drivers may lag a little behind Arch or Fedora, but that's the trade-off for stability. All right, guys, so that wraps up for this breakdown of Rocky Linux 10. This release really reinforces why Rocky is my go-to for serious Linux projects. So whether you're building in the cloud, on-prem, or in a home lab, this distro definitely holds it down. It's stable, consistent, and community-focused. And like I said, I'm putting Rocky to work with my own distro and that's Kit Pro OS. And if you wanna keep up with that project, I'll be dropping more videos soon, so definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you wanna help more people get into Linux, give this video a like and share it with someone who's still holding on to CentOS 7 or is struggling with licensing. Appreciate y'all watching. This is Josh from Keep It Techie, and as always, keep it techie. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it, because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.